Okay, part two. Undergraduate mathematics, the major fields. In order to complete an honors major, there's a few things you have to know. There's a movie in which you say, there's a few things for the perfect women, women to have. She must be amazing in conversation, amazing at the instruments. It's just like with the mathematician at college. You must have a modern algebra background. So modern algebra, well, maybe I should first define what an algebra is. What, what I should first explain what algebra is. Algebra is the study of structure. In undergraduate mathematics here, I would say, it, they do not focus on that concept as much. They focus on computation, and it's very hand-waving. I would say in every engineering class I've been in, they never explain derivation of things like journal canonical forms, or they never explain things that they never proved many of the important theorems because it was simply not important to them. Same thing. Uh, with for, they don't care about convergence of integrals. Who cares if it converges? That is for the mathematician. So that's a big difference. Oh, I'm sorry. I digress once again. So an algebra is a study of structure. And usually when we start off with structure, we start off with groups. So a group fulfills many properties. For example, it has to fulfill Let's see. Well, there's a binary operation on the group. So a group is actually a set along with a binary operation. Binary operation takes two functions in the same space. So let's say the space G. So it takes G Cartesian product G to G. So that is a binary operation. It takes two elements in a space. Well, yes, and spits out another element in that space. And a group is a set with that binary operation that keep, takes two elements from the group and spits out an element from the group. But there's more to this other than the bi group has to fulfill more ideas. An inverse has to exist. For any element in the group, there exists an inverse in the group. Now, before we can define what an inverse is, we need an identity. Every group has to have an identity. We call it E. For example, uh, zero in some groups is identity. One in some groups is identity. The, the element, the doing nothing is identity of, let's see, there, there's, I can probably make, one of my friends, he wants to, he gives real world examples of groups. For example, the uh, light switch, which you must, the light switch, I think. The inverse of pushing it up is pushing it down. The, the identity is just the initial switch. Things like that. So you can actually think about it as a group of uh, order two. Well, actually, you're not allowed to apply something one switch twice, because that is that is not allowed. Because if you did that, it should be the identity. Okay, let me let me rephrase the example. Pushing a button, like for a lamp, on and off. Every time you hit the button, hitting it again will make it go back to initial position. Uh, initial position, that's the identity. That is a group of order two. So groups, there's a lot of fascinating th theorems about groups. Th there's Cauchy's theorem. There's, um, you can study cosets, left cosets, right cosets. The cyclic decomposition theorem of groups. There's abelian groups, groups that preserve uh, the groups that have commutivity. See, we take things, for example, commutativity for granted, A plus B equals B plus A. A times B equals B times A. But commutativity need not hold everywhere. For example, matrices, we know A times B need not equal B times A. In fact, not all matrices, we can't say the set of matrices as a group, because they're not, not all of them are invertible. For example, uh, 1, 1, 1, 1 is not invertible. Well, also, what I've noticed, so in 
high school, you probably learned about invertibility, didn't you? You never, probably never talked about left inverses or right inverses in any proof theorems about that. So I don't. Uh, mm. Let's try to stick to the main subject. So in algebra, you learn about groups. You also learn about rings. It's an extension of a group. It's two operations, a single set. And I believe, don't quote me on this, I should recheck the definition. You get rid of um, the ring, the multiplication of the ring need not have an identity, I believe. What was that right? Oh. No, no, it's not have an identity. Not have an inverse for everything. Okay, I will have to check that. But the thing is, I'm on brick. I spent the last week sleeping 24 7. So my mind's a little bit fuzzy. So that is the idea of algebra, the study of structure, abstract structures. And derive and people sometimes apply this the algebra to things like let's say combinatorics. We have things called the platonic solids. And groups, they can be used to measure symmetry, the permutation group. And we like to devise isomorphism between groups. So how similar one structure is to another structure. For example, two groups that are isomorphic to each other, they preserve, um, if one of them's abelian, the other one's abelian. Uh, things like that. The order has to be the same. We can probably, we can, show some pretty neat things with combinatorics with the platonic solids. If I had a pyramid, if I had a if I had a tricky john and I paint three sides red and one side white. How many possible tetrahedrons are there that, that, that has that? That are different. So because the thing is you can always rotate a tetrahedron. And some of them are the same. So it's not straightforward. It's pretty you have to use groups for that. The symmetry of groups. So that is group theory. And well, that's algebra. Now, linear algebra, which is not stressed in college, is not stressed, I've noticed, in many places. And I actually am taking this out of, so someone named uh, algebra I learned from, Hoffman Kuhns. Uh, he actually uh, writes that many people in college, they don't, they stress computation, but they miss the point. They don't teach linear algebra as an algebra. Of linearity. So that is what algebra is. It's algebra that fulfills the property of linear algebra, uh, fulfills the property of linearity. That is what's important about algebra, linear algebra. Because many things in the world we want linearity because it makes things so much simpler. So linear algebra deals with those transformations and applies things like the circular decomposition to these things and see how pretty they are. So that is linear algebra and algebra. Next thing I want to talk about is my favorite field. Well, that and set theory. We'll talk about that. But one thing that I like to talk about is, oh, by the way, if you want two good books on algebra, if you want an elementary introduction, which is very simple to read, I recommend Armstrong's Groups and Symmetries. If you want something a little bit more, more higher level, I recommend Abstract Algebra by Dummett and Foote. Anyway, that's algebra. Anyway, now I should switch to the next video.